Your eyes do not deceive you. That is the Razer logo on the back of what basically looks like the next bit Robin, or at least the next evolution of it. What you could say is that the next bit Robin from the ashes of what used to be that phone comes what you could call basically the Razer Phoenix. This is the Razer phone. Razer really wants to position this phone as a phone for gamers, and that's an important distinction to make because this is not necessarily a gaming phone. This is a phone that is made for the type of person that wants the best possible specifications in a device that can pretty much do anything. And so far, this phone seems like an absolute beast, and that's no exaggeration. What seems like a behemoth of a phone houses a Quad HD 5.72 inch LCD panel made by Sharp on a body that looks a lot like a beefed up version of the original midnight edition of the Robin. Flat and angular all around, the phone is easy enough to grip if not for its larger size. And much like the next bit Robin, there is a fingerprint reader embedded into the flat power button. The screen has a lot more going for it than its size and resolution. Taking some inspiration from Razer's line of laptops, this screen actually has a 120Hz refresh rate. So that means that everything simply glides across this screen in a way that they call Ultra Motion. This is something that you'll be able to experience not only in games of course, but also in scrolling through websites like our own and of course going through certain applications like Reddit. On top of that, the sync rate is always synced to the GPU, making it adaptable for whatever situation the phone is rendering. The result is a variability that allows for the battery to be used only when it absolutely has to be, so you're not going to get lower battery life just because it's always firing on all cylinders. Now as far as games go, not all games will run at this super high refresh rate, but Razer has already gotten a number of partners on board, with more to come in the future. A couple of names that were dropped included Tencent, which you might know from League of Legends, and also Final Fantasy XV Mobile Edition by Square Enix. And it's good that games look great on here because the performance is as top notch as possible, and we mean that. The Snapdragon 835 powers the Razer phone, but as a bit of a surprise, there's a massive amount of RAM on here at 8GB, and Razer has made sure that all 8 gigabytes is used by the phone. Of course, we can't really talk about the long-term performance of this phone as we've only gotten a little bit of time with the phone thus far, but we're pretty confident that 8 gigabytes will go a long way, especially in terms of multitasking and productivity. And on top of that, you can actually cater the speed of the processor in the game booster. Cap the frame rate at 60 or 90 frames per second if you wish, change the display resolution that the game pumps out, or even change the clock speed so you can get a little bit more game time out of the 4000 milliamp hour battery. Now, you can't necessarily overclock the processor, but Razer did tell us that the max performance setting in the game booster already puts it at its max level above what it is already set at at default. But for the sake of battery life, it's nice that you can change the settings up so you can get a little bit more game time. So let's get to the rest of the hardware. 64GB of onboard storage is available, but an SD card slot is also there in case you use up all 64GB available for all the games that you might install. Or maybe you aren't all about games. If you want a media powerhouse, that screen will certainly enhance the experience. But audio has not been left out of the equation either. In a partnership with Dolby, Dolby Atmos for mobile helps power the dual front-facing speakers that sound incredible. Once again, Razer derives from their laptop line in order to create speakers that are super high quality on a mobile device. And these speaker grills are a lot like the ones you would find on a laptop. We cranked it up to max and not only did the lows and mids actually sound quite full, but the highs were not piercing to the ear and it got really loud. And then I went on a journey of self-discovery. Where I met you. But of course, if you don't want to bother anyone else with the speakers, headphones are always an option. Unfortunately, there is no headphone jack on this device. Now let that bummer sink in for a second and then realize that the adapter that Razer adds into the box has a 24-bit DAC installed. This is a move I've been spouting phone manufacturers should do for a long, long time. It's great to see it finally happen and Razer is one of the first to do it. Unfortunately, we didn't have any high impedance headphones to really test this out, but we look forward to doing so once we get our hands on our review unit. We're pretty confident that the audio experience on here is going to be top notch. The next bit Robin was notorious for having a slow camera experience and that doesn't seem to be the case here, but the camera software lacks a lot of options. There are dual cameras on the back with a telephoto lens and both are 12 megapixel cameras. Unfortunately, when you go into the application, there aren't really a whole lot of options for you to mess around with. Not even a button for you to be able to change between the two lenses easily. We still remain hopeful that this camera combo and the 8 megapixel front facing shooter will prove to be good cameras despite their lacking software, but we wouldn't be surprised if this was the one part of the device that we weren't super excited about. 
Which brings us to the software, and Razer again put some forward thinking into what they're trying to provide in this device by partnering up with a very popular third-party launcher. That's right, Nova Launcher Premium is going to be pre-installed on here, so you have all of the customization options that Nova has already given people who love it. There are the typical green and black color motifs throughout the operating system, but anyone that has used Nova before will know what to expect. Android tinkerers are given carte blanche to make it look the way that they desire. So to Razer, this phone personifies the philosophy that they've always had with their gaming community. Uncompromising specifications, high quality offerings, and the ability to use their highly stylized products to achieve a myriad of tasks. With that in mind, they wanted to make a phone that was made for gamers, even if it's not necessarily a gaming phone. But of course, it could blow away pretty much any game you throw at it. If you're looking for the highest performance device ever, then this might be the phone you've been waiting for. With a large screen, great specifications, and performance that can help you get gaming, productivity, and media done. Today's announcement of the Razer phone will also have another surprise, the price. This phone could have easily hit the $1,000 price point we thought, but instead the phone is priced at $699. It is available for pre-order on November 3rd on Razer's website and through select e-commerce channels, with the phones making it to users' hands around the 17th. Keep it tuned to Android Authority for even more about the Razer phone, and we can't wait to get our hands on a review unit. If you are a gaming person, this might be the phone you've been waiting for, but for everybody else, this phone is going to provide as much as it can so you can enjoy it as well. Keep it tuned to Android Authority and we'll see what what that result is. And remember to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already because we are your source for all things Android.